So let's talk about carbs. So the macronutrient profile of the food that you consume plays a huge role in determining your hormonal balance. And the best macro profile is probably not what you've been led to think. Now, before we dive into this further explanation, let's cover the basics first. All of the information in today's video, plus much more, can be found in my book, Master Your Tea. Visit MasterYourTea.com for a free digital download of the book. $20 in value, absolutely free for you. So what's a macronutrient? Macronutrients are the three large macro groups of nutrients, which are basically the substances that are needed for growth, metabolism, and other body processes. And they're split into fats, carbohydrates, and proteins in terms of classification. So each of these major macronutrients plays a role in supporting the endocrine system and overall healthy functioning of the body. So it should come as no surprise when we see research findings that illustrate potentially detrimental effects of eliminating an entire macronutrient group from an individual's diet. Now, since I focus on testosterone in my Master Your Tea book, this shows that low carbohydrate diets are detrimental for testosterone optimization, low fat diets are detrimental for testosterone optimization, and high protein diets are detrimental for testosterone optimization. So much of the body of research on the subject of testosterone and macronutrient composition of meals also focuses on adding the element of resistance training. So we can rest assured that a lot of the findings are pretty relevant to our goals and not just isolated sterile results. So let's talk about what role carbohydrates play in this whole thing. Your body's natural hormone levels are affected by the availability of certain macronutrients. When it comes to carbs, a low blood glucose concentration stimulates a compensatory response from hormones like epinephrine, glucagon, and cortisol, known in this context as fuel mobilizing hormones. So for example, one study found that drastically higher levels of these hormones were in subjects after consuming a low carbohydrate diet, which was 11% carbohydrate, compared to subjects consuming a high carbohydrate diet at 77% carbs. Low carbohydrate diets tend to have a direct effect on the testosterone to cortisol ratio in humans. Especially when undergoing athletic or fitness training, like resistance training, the body needs adequate carbs to support glycogen synthesis and maintain blood glucose levels without putting extra stress on the body in the form of chronically elevated epinephrine and cortisol. This cortisol secretion occurs in an effort to maintain blood glucose through muscle proteolysis and amino acid oxidation, and has been found to increase similarly in response to a high protein diet, as well as due to neglecting adequate carbohydrate consumption on that regimen, which we'll discuss further in a minute. SHBG and cortisol binding protein levels are shown to decrease with the moderate to high levels of carbohydrate consumption. And one study that measured the effects of carbohydrate consumption on the free testosterone to cortisol ratio over repeated days of training, as opposed to most studies which only look at acute bouts of training, the researchers found that the ratio substantially decreased in the low carbohydrate group, while the control group saw no drop or rise. This is pretty telling for a couple of reasons. Remember the fact that the ratio in high carbohydrate control subjects did not change in response to three consecutive days of hard training. This means that while overall acute levels of the hormones in the blood may fluctuate over time, their proportion to one another did not change, and that appears to be a direct result of the amount of carbohydrates in the diet, which in this case was 60%. The low carb group was consuming 30% of their daily calories from carbohydrates, and in low carb circles, this is actually still considered very high carb. Yet even that group saw a drastic increase in the ratio. And this is super telling. Imagine what a training would do to people that are on a 10% carbohydrate ratio or around 100 grams a day. In the low carb test group, resting levels found an additional 36% decrease in free testosterone and a 14% increase in cortisol, which is pretty bad. In individuals immediately following training, they seem to have an accentuation over time, even in the absence of the stimulus, due to an inability of the diet to support the training and the increased effort of these fuel mobilizing hormones to compensate. So adequate carbohydrate consumption is necessary to support training. And supporting training is actually supporting a healthy hormonal profile by preventing the chronic rise in cortisol, glucagon, and epinephrine. However, processing this information on carbohydrates in isolation doesn't really do us any good either. We need to be sure and view it in the context of a complete macro profile, including fats and proteins in the mix. Only then can we make a truly educated hypothesis about what the optimal testosterone-supporting macro profile should be. Now, it's trendy right now to emit certain macronutrients. Some years ago, it was the low-fat craze, and not a big surprise, people got sicker than ever because of it. The mass media always needs something to demonize, and currently, carbs are the, considered the root of all evil. So you might have read posts out there on the internet about 10 ways to boost testosterone and such lists from other websites which often claim that you should avoid carbs to boost tea. But that just goes completely against current scientific evidence. 
To be honest, carbs are not bad at all. Carbs are pretty freaking great, and they're important for testosterone optimization. Let's take a closer look. So people often claim that low carb diets are superior to anything else, simply because they would be better for losing weight. Fortunately, this is a load of BS because weight loss is all about energy balance. So if you consume more calories than you burn, you gain weight. If you consume less calories than you burn, you lose weight. There's a mounting pile of scientific evidence to prove this fact. And anyone who tells you that you could bend this law of physics by tricking around your macronutrients is a nutcracker. Heck, Professor Mark Krob lost 27 pounds by only eating Twinkies, Little Debbie snacks, Oreos, sugary cereals, and Dorito chips. Why? Because he simply ate less calories and what his body used. You simply can't escape the law of thermodynamics with fad diets. The only time that you could actually benefit from low carb diets is if you have some serious issues with insulin resistance or leptin resistance, or if you're prepping up for a bodybuilding show. If this isn't you, then there's really no need to omit carbohydrates. Now that I've gotten that out of the way, let's go to the meaty part of this video, the studies. Now here's why carbohydrates are essentially important for testosterone production. Now in this study, the researchers divided the subjects in two groups. One group ate a high-carb, low-protein diet, whereas the other group ate a high-protein, low-carb diet. Now, fat intake and calories were identical. Ten days into the study, the results showed that the high-carb diet had significantly higher free testosterone levels, 36%, lower SHBG levels, and lower cortisol levels when compared to the high-protein, low-carb group. Another study, this one, found that in exercising men, the stress hormone cortisol increases rapidly when they're put on low-carb diets. Needless to say, this is pretty bad for testosterone production. Gonadotropin-releasing hormone, or GNRH, which is a hormone that basically starts the whole cascade of events and eventually leads to testosterone synthesis, adjusts its pulsating rate according to the glucose levels of the body. When there's a high amount of glucose present, the hypothalamus inside our brain can release more GnRH, and thus your body synthesizes more T. When there's a low amount of glucose present in the body, the brain releases less GnRH, which slows down testosterone synthesis. Now, as glucose is mainly generated from carbohydrates, it's pretty obvious that low-carb diets also mean lowered blood, muscle, and brain glucose levels, leading to slower release of GnRH, and therefore also lower T. In this study, the researchers had two groups of men who performed three consecutive days of intensive training. The only thing different between these groups was the carb consumption. One group ate 60% of their daily calories from carbs, the other group ate only 30%. And that's not even considered low carb anymore. The final study measurements were taken on the third day and they showed that the group that had the lower amount of carbs had significantly lower free testosterone levels and higher cortisol levels. This is one of the reasons why I recommend more carbs on training days. Similar results were observed in this study too. You see, that's why I don't recommend low carb diets. But are all carbs created equal? Should you just slam your face with spaghetti, sugar, and hamburger buns? So the answer is that there's a difference between carb sources, and this is obvious. When it comes to boosting testosterone, I recommend one group, and I don't recommend the other. The group that I recommend is starchy tubers and fruits, so things like potatoes, yam, pumpkins, beets, carrots, turnips, squash, and all manner of both sweet and savory fruits. The group I don't recommend is most grains, so wheat, cereals, pasta, corn, that sort of thing. If your goal is to eat the testosterone-boosting carbs, you should eat most of your carbs from group one not group two. Here's why. Most grains contain a lot of gluten, and gluten is known for its prolactin-increasing effects. So prolactin, on the other hand, is known for reducing testosterone levels. Grains, for the most part, are known to cause systemic inflammation in the body, and inflammation promotes cortisol and reduces testosterone. Now, it doesn't kill you or wipe away your testosterone tank if you have bread or pasta once in a while, but eating mostly from group one is a good staple to follow if you want to increase your natural tea production. Even better, you can follow the thermo diet. Now, personally, I like to eat a lot of potatoes, and I consider them to be the god tier when it comes to carbs. And if I have some grains, I try to make sure it's a sourdough bread, because that's thermo. So, in conclusion, carbohydrates are essential for testosterone. They're not unhealthy at all. Just stop believing the mass media craze. They'll always need some food group to demonize, and currently, it's carbohydrates. So if you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about how to increase your tea levels naturally, I actually wrote an entire book on it. And I usually sell this book on Amazon for $20, uh, where you can go check it out over there if you want, but you can get it for free at MasterYourTea.com. I really want to get this information out there. I think there's a lot of misconceptions about how to boost your tea naturally. And uh, this book basically dispels all the misconceptions. It's got 882 references to it. We cover everything from micronutrients to nutrition to supplementation, lifestyle, and training. It's all in here. Tons of people have read this book so far. I've had it out for years. Uh, I think you will really, really enjoy it if this is a topic that you're interested in. So go check it out, MasterYourTea.com. You'll also get a $5 off coupon for Testro X. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.